beneath the scorched wind of the Karakam Desert, among stone-carved tombs and the ruins of forgotten empires, there lives a people whose DNA defies the logic of time and language. They speak a Turkic tongue. They ride with the pride of Ogu's nomads. Their songs echo the steppe. But hidden in their blood is a story older than their words, a story not of conquerors, but of survivors, of mothers who bore children beneath Siberian skies, of fathers descended from a lineage shared with no other people in Central Asia, of a tribe that somehow preserved the voice of a vanished world. Not in scripture, not in stone, but in chromosomes. What makes the Turkmen so different? Why does a single genetic signature dominate their bloodlines? As if an entire nation sprang from one forgotten patriarch. And what secrets lie within the mitochondrial traces of women whose genetic whispers echo only in the Turkmen and the wilds of southern Siberia? This isn't just a story of ancestry. This is a riddle of identity, migration without movement, of language without lineage, of a nation that looks Turkic, but bleeds ironic. In the heart of Central Asia, surrounded by nations whose genetics shift like the sands around them, the Turkmen stand as an outlier. Scientists expected their DNA to echo that of their linguistic cousins, the Turks, the Cossacks, the Uzbeks, but it didn't. Instead, what emerged from the sequencing labs was something entirely unexpected. One white chromosome haplogroup, Q, specifically the subclade QM25, dominates the paternal lines of Turkmen men. In some tribes, it reaches as high as 73%. This is not a coincidence. It's not random. It's a genetic monolith. A marker of a people forged in unusual isolation or by a dramatic ancestral bottleneck. But that's only the beginning. Further down the genetic helix, researchers uncovered mitochondrial signatures. The unbroken. It's maternal chains that refuse to fit into any known regional patterns. Two polymorphic markers, never found together in any population outside Turkmenistan, and a handful of groups in southern Siberia, sat embedded like encrypted messages in the genome. And then came the comparisons. When Turkmen DNA was placed beside that of their geographic neighbors Tajiks, Uzbeks, Kazakhs, a pattern emerged. The Turkmen were genetically distinct, not slightly, profoundly, even among other Central Asian groups who shared language, culture, and terrain. The Turkmen genome stood apart, concentrated, unblended, ancient. The contradiction deepened. A Turkic language, nomadic history. A clear cultural affiliation with steppe warriors and desert tribes. Yet under the microscope, the inheritance told a different tale. One written not in the migration patterns of the last millennium, but in the deep time movement of peoples who once wandered the edges of ironic civilization and prehistoric Siberia, this paradox, this unspoken tension between tongue and blood, is what makes Turkmen DNA a scientific enigma. It refuses to conform. It doesn't fit the linguistic tree, it doesn't bow to political maps. It whispers of something older, deeper, and still largely unexplained. Long before the first Turkic word echoed across the desert, before the rise of steppe Khanates or the arrival of the Agus, another people walked this land. Their cities were ringed with mud brick walls. Their dead were buried with bronze tools, solar symbols, and offerings for the afterlife. They were not nomads. They were builders, artisans of the Oxus, priests of fire, guardians of the Bactria Margiana horizon and their genetic legacy still breathes beneath the Turkmen skin. Genome-wide analysis reveals that nearly 90% of Turkmen autosomal DNA clusters not with Turkic groups of the East, but with indo iranian populations, especially the Tajiks. Their closest genetic relatives aren't in Anatolia or Mongolia. But in the highlands of Iran and the valleys of ancient Sogdia, this is not a small overlap. It's a deep-rooted continuity the kind that only emerges when populations persist in the same region for thousands of years. Archaeological remains from Bronze and Iron Age Turkmenistan, from sites like Ganer Tepe and Ulig Dipi, have yielded skeletal DNA that matches strikingly with modern Turkmen profiles. The implication is stunning. The people who planted wheat beside the Merghab River, who carved images of solar deities into stone, are still here, changed in name.
changed in language, but not in blood. The Iranian plateau did not lose them to time, merely watched them evolve. The Agus may have brought new words and new customs, but they grafted themselves onto a lineage that was already ancient when the Turkic world was still forming. What we call Turkmen today is, in many ways, the final phase of an Aaronic people's unbroken survival, an ancestral thread stretching from the dawn of Indo-European expansion to the fractured geopolitics of modern Central Asia. This isn't cultural memory. This is biological evidence. They didn't just inherit a land. They inherited themselves. They arrived not with armies, but with rhythm. The gallop of hooves, the crack of leather, the blaze of campfires beneath open skies. The Agus Turks came westward in waves, migrating from the Altai into the Iranian plateau around a thousand years ago. They brought with them a language unspoken in this land, customs foreign to its soil, and an identity born from distant steppes. Yet when they reached the fringes of what is now Turkmenistan, they encountered something older than conquest, a people rooted so deeply in the earth, no sword could dislodge them. But language is not always spread by war. Sometimes it flows through power, through prestige through generations of children who grow up speaking the words of the rulers, not their ancestors. That is how the transformation began. A culture that had been Iranic for millennia began to speak Turkic. The shift happened over centuries, subtle, organic, irreversible. But while their vocabulary changed, their genes remained. The result was extraordinary. A new ethnic identity formed, Turkic in sound, but Iranic in substance. The Turkmen became an example almost without parallel, a people who adopted a new language family without absorbing the genes typically tied to it. In genetic clustering models, this anomaly is clear. Turkmans do not fall among Mongolic or Altaic-descended groups. They align with indo iranian populations. Their DNA is rich with markers absent from most other Turkic-speaking nations. This phenomenon, cultural assimilation without demographic overhaul, is rare. It demands isolation, stability, and time. And Turkmenistan, with its deserts and tribal structures, provided all three. The Agus gave the Turkmen a new tongue and a new flag, but they did not erase what was already there. Instead, they built upon it, unknowingly preserving a much older genome beneath the surface of a newer name. It hides in the white chromosome, passed from father to son, like a sealed letter, never opened. Hapluth Group Q, particularly the sub-branches QM25 and QM242, marks the paternal ancestry of most Turkmen men. Not half, not a third, in some lineages, nearly three out of four. This isn't distribution, it's dominance. And it tells a story few have noticed. Elsewhere in Central Asia, haplogroups weave a mosaic. Kazakhs lean toward CM217 linked to Mongolic expansions. Uzbeks show a scatter of West and East Eurasian lines. Even modern Turks in Anatolia carry far more European and Middle Eastern signatures than Central Asian ones. But among the Turkmen, the Qhapla group reigns like an ancient sovereign whose bloodline was never dethroned. Where did it come from? The deeper branches of Q trace back to Siberia, two forested landscapes where mammoth hunters once carved bone tools and tracked reindeer beneath auroras. These were no settled farmers. They were mobile, resilient, adapted to harshness. When their descendants moved south, they didn't vanish. They left imprints. Deep, enduring, precise. The persistence of Q in Turkmenistan suggests a fusion. Perhaps a powerful patrilineal clan from the north merged with settled Iranic peoples, and through status, succession, or sheer isolation, that Wileen endured nearly untouched. This isn't just a relic of the past a living structure in the present. Every Turkmen boy who inherits this chromosome is unknowingly part of a legacy that stretches across millennia. From Siberian tundras to Bronze Age oases to the nomadic roots of the medieval steppe, and outside the Americas, where Q also exists due to Ice Age migrations, there are few places on Earth where this haplogroup reaches such heights. What this means is profound. A genetic signature carried quietly across centuries shaping an entire nation's paternal identity, and anchoring the Turkmen to one of humanity's oldest migratory currents. It is not the language, the border, or the passport that binds them. 
It is this silent lineage, whispered through father's blood, and still unbroken. If the white chromosome is a drumbeat passed from father to son, then mitochondrial DNA is a whisper, passed quietly from mother to child, generation after generation, unbroken and nearly unaltered. In the case of the Turkmen, that whisper carries a mystery. When researchers mapped maternal lineages, they expected a blend, the kind found across Eurasia, shaped by centuries of war, trade, and tribal exchange. And to some extent they found it. West Eurasian haplogroups, common in the Middle East and Europe, formed the majority. A handful of East Eurasian lines appeared as well, but then t something else surfaced. Two mitochondrial variants, both rare, both polymorphic, appeared in Turkmen DNA. No other known population carried them together, except one. Southern Siberians. Dot. Thousands of kilometers apart, separated by mountains, deserts, and centuries of divergent history. And yet this invisible thread connects them. These markers don't shout. They don't dominate the genome like haplogroup Q, but their rarity makes them powerful. They suggest survival. Persistence. The kind of genetic signature that endures not through conquest but through quiet, continuous lineage. Who were these women? We may never know their names, their languages, or their beliefs. But their mitochondria remain, fossilized in the DNA of modern Turkmen, like an ember carried through fire after fire, still glowing. Unlike paternal haplogroups, which can rise sharply through social structures like patriarchy or tribal dominance, maternal lines tend to diffuse slowly, that these rare variants survived at all? In the face of displacement, migration, cultural change, points to an extraordinary kind of ancestral stability. These weren't just mothers of children. They were mothers of identity, unseen architects of continuity across thousands of years. When we look at Turkmen DNA through the lens of maternal lineage, a new portrait emerges, not one of sweeping conquest, but of rootedness. Not loud banners or shifting empires, but the still quiet endurance of bloodlines that refuse to fade. At a region carved by the endless movement of tribes, the Turkmen remained curiously still. While Mongol hordes swept across the steppe, while Persian dynasties rose and fell, while nomadic alliances fractured and reformed. One thing in Turkmenistan held fast, the genome, compared to their neighbors. Turkmen DNA is a study in conservation where Kazakh profiles pulse with East Asian influx, and Uzbek genetics reflect waves of Central Asian, Persian, and Mongolic influence. The Turkmen display a restrained pattern, deliberate, unmixed, guarded. What allowed such genetic clarity to survive in the chaos of empire? Part of the answer lies in geography. Vast deserts that isolate rather than connect, tribal strongholds more inward-facing than expansionist. Another lies in culture, rigid kinship systems, endogamous traditions, and a fierce preservation of lineage boundaries. But there's more to it than physical or social barriers. Genetic studies showed that post-medieval gene flow into Turkmenistan was remarkably limited. Even during periods of occupation or regional unrest, foreign DNA made little impact. The markers of Mongol conquest, such as haplogroup C2, which surged in much of the steppe barely register in Turkmen male lineages. Similarly, widespread Persian intermixing, common in urban centers across the Iranian plateau, left only faint traces here. This resistance to admixture was not born from isolation alone. It suggests a cultural mechanism, an internal firewall, that actively filtered outsiders from fully entering the bloodline. And so the Turkmen gene pool solidified, stable, predictable, resistant to outside drift kind of molecular time capsule that held its shape while the rest of the region blurred. What results is not just continuity, but contrast. The Turkmen today carry a DNA profile that mirrors their ancestors with uncommon precision, a living echo of pre-modern Central Asia, untouched by many of the upheavals that reshaped neighboring populations. In the genomic map of Eurasia, they are a fixed point. They pray in Turkic, they write in Turkic, their epics rise from Turkic verse. But within their cells, the story is older, and it speaks a different tongue. The Turkmen identity is built on a contradiction, 
a nation linguistically aligned with the Turkic world, yet genetically anchored in the Iranian plateau. This duality isn't superficial, it's foundational. It defines them. For centuries, this contradiction went unnoticed. Language is visible. Genes are not. But with the advent of genomic science, a truth emerged that challenged long-held assumptions. The people of Turkmenistan did not descend from the same eastern lineages that shaped their Turkic cousins across Central Asia. Instead, their genetic profile reflects continuity with ancient Indo-Iranian populations, the same ancestral base as Tajiks and Persians. This disconnect between speech and origin is rare but not unheard of. What makes the Turkmen case exceptional is how complete the transformation was. Culturally thorough, yet biologically restrained. The East Asian component so prevalent in other Turkic-speaking groups is minimal here. Linguistic identity traveled with the Aju's clans, but their genetic legacy barely disrupted the deeper substrate. The result is a people who inherited the words of conquerors, but not their biology. In comparative models, Turkmans do not cluster with Uzbeks or Kazakhs. They sit closer to West Eurasian populations. The language says Turkic, but the genome says Iranic. The split is not cosmetic, it's structural. To understand the Turkmen paradox is to understand that ethnicity is not always a mirror. Sometimes it's a palimpsest, a rewritten surface beneath which the original text still survives. And in that hidden layer, the true ancestry of the Turkmen endures, untouched by empire, undiluted by conquest, speaking through their DNA in the voice of vanished civilizations.